Okay, so step two is about the concept of calories, which um, is, has almost become the modern construct of nutrition. When you hear uh, nutrition or di di diet or dietetics, calories are almost like the first thing that comes to mind. But I argue that it's way, way too sim simple. It's an equation that a five-year-old can understand. Calories in versus calories out. And if you get that balance right, you lose weight. But our body is not that simple. Our body is a very complex organism and we need to actually nurture the body in order to lose weight. So my key argument is that if you are healthy, you'll lose weight or lose body fat, become toned in the right way. And thankfully some... Uh, some scientists and organizations are starting to uh, support my thoughts. So this uh, recent paper says, it's time to stop counting calories and time instead to promote dietary changes that substantially and rapidly reduce cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. So they say that shifting the focus away from calories and emphasizing a dietary pattern that focuses on food quality rather than quantity will help rapidly reduce obesity related diseases and cardiovascular disease so just remember that quality over quantity this is a uh, another thing that i focus on food not nutrients so i'm going to ask you what this is sounds uh, fairly obvious you know it's an apple isn't it it's a piece of fruit but if you talk to somebody who's very into uh, the, the conventional calories and macronutrient way of thinking, that's 25 grams of carbs, did you know? Or somebody into the, the, the high fat, low carb paradigm, that becomes how many carbohydrates are in there? How many calories are in there? Or what lack of fat is in there? But it's a fruit. It's an apple. And apples have nurturing uh, aspects to them. One of my favorite techniques for actually um, supporting gut health is asking my clients to stew apples. I had a bit of cinnamon in, it tastes lovely. Stewed apples are actually great for gut health. So we need to look beyond just nutrients, calories, macronutrients, and we need to think quality and not just quantity. So thankfully there is some momentum starting to um, slowly appear to overhaul the, the calorie thoughts. This one is a study that's actually looking at almonds. So the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, which is quite a big jur journal, uh, is now suggesting that um, previous measurements for almonds are actually, they actually have 20% fewer calories than they previously thought. Now, if you have almonds once a week, it probably doesn't affect your calorie count too much. But what happens if you have calories every day? That's, that's quite a big influence on the number of calories that you might be reporting. And what if also some peanuts and some a apples and potatoes and uh, nectarines, also, they've, uh, the, they've misjudged the number of calories in, in those particular bits of food. Then our whole paradigm around calories um, and the measurement of, of it becomes questionable. Right? So the, there's a limitation here. And when, when I came through my studies of nutrition, one of the things you, you learned about calorie measurements was the errors. And those error me measurements all the way through the, um, you know, the, the technique of measuring. But that's not what you as lay person, lay people um, actually hear. Because it, it's on your fancy app on your phone. It's in black and white. You get figures. And they go down even sometimes to the decimal place. So, oh, it's like weighing yourself on scale. Because it says, you know, something point five kilograms, you think, oh, it must be accurate. Mm. 
but it doesn't tell you why, how accurate those scales are. It doesn't tell you how accurate these calorie measurements are. So there's measurement technique errors in how you write stuff down. That apple, is it a small apple or is it a medium apple? So when you go to enter it in your app, how you rep I might think it's a small apple but you think it's a medium apple, it's going to affect the figures that you get. Okay, So there's errors all the way through. So this is a study looking at the, the thoughts that a calorie deficit per day will end up meaning weight loss. That's how nutrition professionals work. Okay, If you can get into a calorie deficit, it's only a matter of time that you're going to lose body fat. So conventional wisdom states that a 500 calorie per day deficit will lead to a 0.5 to 1 kilo loss in body fat per week. But new research that's coming out, fairly recent, is saying that the, the rate is actually quite a bit slower. So that's the theoretical based on the, the maths that have been put into that equation. But when you actually look at what people experience in real practice, some people will match that weight loss, some people will be slower, and some people will have that 500 calorie deficit, but absolutely nothing changes. And you'll see that a little bit later. 